Re-elect Justin Trudeau in 2019 because he feels your pain, and he's not afraid to show it. Look at these big, salty tears rolling down his face. Who says real men don't cry? Trudeau cries almost every week, and he's clearly a man's man. He weeps for aboriginals, sobs for gays, and cries for refugees. Look at him, overflowing with emotion. This is what a real leader looks like, constantly weeping. And no other candidate offers this level of tear duct output. I mean, when was the last time you even saw one of his competitors cry in public? Do they even care? They must be insensitive. And it's a well-known fact that everyone likes seeing a grown man sobbing. It's not awkward at all. It shows he's strong enough to handle anything. A war, a terror attack. I mean, look at... Justin Trudeau may come home from China empty-handed. Will this be yet another abject failure by the Canadian government to secure a trade deal they had wanted and promised? Maybe given our prior trade negotiations, Canadians should have expected failure. After all, our International Trade Minister Christian Freeland famously broke down in tears when trade negotiations stalled with the European Union. And now NAFTA negotiations are going very poorly by all accounts from both sides of the border. You see, Trudeau had intended to enlist China as a buffer with the United States and President Trump during these NAFTA negotiations. But what is becoming increasingly clear, even within Canada's media party, who usually can't help but fawn over everything Justin Trudeau has done the past two years, is just how inept these Trudeau liberals are at negotiating trade deals. Upon arriving in Beijing, one thing was abundantly clear. The liberals expected a trade deal, or at the very least, serious progress towards one. Remember, we're only mere weeks removed from the visit of President Trump to China, but both the receptions and the results have been polar opposites. As we reported, Trump left China with $250 billion in trade deals, including over $40 billion in a massive LNG deal for Alaska, and he secured the release of those three knucklehead UCLA basketball stars who were facing jail time for shoplifting. As for Trudeau, well, to be fair, the trip isn't over just yet, but the headlines from the first two days have been just awful. And thus far, no deal and no Canadian prisoners released either. John Iveson of the National Post wrote on Monday that the Chinese ambushed Trudeau on trade talks as the Liberals arrived believing China had already agreed to their progressive trade agenda and were willing to make concessions on the environment, labor rights, and even human rights. Well, not so fast, apparently, as Trudeau's meeting with Chinese Premier Li Keqiang did not go well. And according to Iveson, quote, Trudeau emerged to give his final statement looking like the boy who expected a bike for Christmas and instead got a pair of plain socks, unquote. And nothing can possibly dis disappoint Justin Trudeau more than plain socks. Iveson went on to report the Canadian photographers even the Prime Minister's personal photographer were regularly blocked from taking photos of the event by Chinese security. Then on Tuesday, as Trudeau met with President Xi Jinping, it appeared maybe Justin Trudeau had brought Canada closer to a deal, as Iveson reports the on-again, off-again deal was almost on again before it fell apart. Iveson writes, quote, There are three golden rules to doing business in this country. You never try to impose your own values, you never interpret acknowledgement during a meeting as agreement, and you don't assume that people in that meeting have the authority to strike a deal. Ottawa seems to have broken all three rules." Unquote. Well, it appears our globalist prime minister forgot there is still quite a nationalist streak in China. And they're not just going to play by our rules because we want them to or because we've been friendly as a nation, say, not opposing major acquisitions of, of Canadian companies by Chinese firms, as we've seen since Justin Trudeau became prime minister. But just for a moment, let's just quickly compare the approach of Justin Trudeau in Canada to that of President Trump and his U.S. administration. Trump values a personal relationship and friendship with President Xi. And right now it doesn't appear Justin Trudeau has that same kind of friendship. Trump spent decades as a fierce critic of China, and so it's not a stretch to see that they are paying him respect because of that tough talk over all those years. And while it's not an easy comparison to make between Canada and the United States, as our th southern neighbors have far more influence and power over China than we will ever have, but remember the way the Chinese received President Obama? 
Doesn't that remind you of the way they treat Justin Trudeau? If you recall Obama's 2016 visit to China, he was forced by the Chinese to exit Air Force One on the runway, well, as The Guardian put it, from the ass of the plane. And while Trudeau's sit down with Premier Li was not quite as humiliating, the way the Chinese ambushed him when he assumed that he had already had a deal to be made and it was, and it was there for the taking, well, those are the same intentional tactics they used with President Obama. So barring a last minute deal, should Trudeau and the Liberals return empty handed to Canada, well, the pressure will be on to come to a deal on NAFTA. But the Trump administration will then know they have Canada between a rock and a hard place with no leverage without a deal with China. And now that Trudeau is less than two years from re-election, and without any major trade wins or a strong economy that reflects the positive movement we've seen south of the border under Donald Trump, well, Canada's liberals might find themselves... ...all fell down from my face. That happens maybe twice a year. But my jaw dropped. The colloquialism became literally true. Canada has elected a retard for prime minister. I'm stunned. I know people who know this guy. A friend of mine went camping with him, and when he wanted to, uh, they were going to have a campfire, and uh, Justin was worried about the carbon footprint that would leave. Everyone recognizes that this guy is a moron. It's almost like his shtick, like a pretty blonde who says oopsie. That's kind of his whole persona, is his stupidity. And he's the boss of the country now? <laughs> When John Oliver uh, did his whole uh, shtick on Stop Harper this week, he was talking about how evil Stephen Harper is and how you have to... Our, our own Mike Myers, who is now traitor Mike Myers, got up and said, don't vote for Harper. Uh, I didn't understand what the problem with Stephen Harper was. It seemed to be focused on the fact that Harper doesn't want you to wear your hijab during the Canadian citizenship ceremony. So as you swear your allegiance to Canada, can you not have a garbage bag on your head? That is a violation of uh, your religion, according to the left and the Harper haters. This is a country where four children, Muslim children, were just killed by their own family for being too Western. So you have to put it in the context of the country. And the context of Canada is multiculturalism run amok. It is refugee central. And so they put some laws in place to prevent more radicalization, more female genital mutilation, uh, to prevent honor killings, to prevent the end of Canada. And then you say to yourself, okay, uh, thanks for that, Gav. And now I realize that Harper was a good guy. And uh, John Oliver is a moron and doesn't know anything about the country he's mocking. And he's a, a Muslim apologist like all liberals. But let me ask you something, me. How did uh, that country become such a mess? Well, you're not going to believe it. It was a pompous douche named Pierre Trudeau. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Trudeau, Justin Trudeau got elected because his dad is known as this icon trudeau mania we called it when he was running we loved him and trudeau sucked so it's not the son of a legend it's the son of an even worse guy possibly it'll, it'll be fun quantifying who's worse trudeau is the guy he was popular because i guess his wife slept with the rolling stones and he gave some reporters the finger and he danced uh disrespectfully behind the queen right on he's our barack obama our cool guy he was irreverent he also was so fanatical about bilingualism that to this very day, if you got on a plane in Vancouver, the stewardess has to talk about la ceinture and blah, 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 and speak in French to a plane full of people who are English. Same with the East Coast. In Newfoundland, you got a bunch of fishermen saying bonjour for some stupid reason. And not only did he force French down the entire country's throat to the tune of trillions of dollars, but he forced multiculturalism down all our throats and said basically that Canada isn't about Canada. It's not about the people who built it, who were primarily Scots. If you go to a natural history museum today, you will not see anything about the Scots. You will see a uh, Cambodian laundromat uh, and you will see talk of some French trapper who sold someone a beaver pelt. Canada's true history is erased. And if you look at the money, you see Scottish guys. If you look at a map, you see McClure Crescent and, and McCarthy Road. But uh, Trudeau worked very hard and spent a lot of 
our money making us not exist. And now Canada is a fucking mess and you just elected that idiot's son who's like him, but way stupider. Even John Oliver spent a big portion of his segment on how, what an idiot Justin Trudeau is. There is some concern that Justin Trudeau may not be quite as smart as his father, as a journalist who's covered him conceives. His father was considered sort of intellectually brilliant smart. Does he have that kind of smarts? No. Now, my job is lampooning ridiculous politics, so I'm good. Uh, this is more fodder for me, but you, well, uh, you're fucked. Mr. Speaker, cease this. What's been great about the UK and the US uh, as, as countries that have had immigration over and over again, successive waves of immigration, both ethnic and uh, various other kinds, is that people have come to the UK, people have come to the US with values in common. They've come and they have become British or become Americans. They have come believing in democracy, capitalism and freedom. There's one group, one religious culture that has failed to do that everywhere that it has arrived. British Muslims are now less integrated and less assimilated, not more than their parents and their grandparents' generation. We're now sending as many people to ISIS as Belgium, which is like a jihadi hotspot, right? Um, you don't have large numbers of uh, working class Muslims in this country. You have terrorists and you have nice middle class people who could afford to fly here, right? You don't have 1.4 million migrants like Germany does. But when you start to, if your politicians go the same way as Trudeau in Canada, when you start to, you're going to see some of this stuff happen. And, you know, in answer to your question, the best thing that people can do is be, is be educated about the realistic risks of living in close proximity with people who want them dead. The only people who are surprised by, the, by the, the fact that Muslims don't like gays very much is journalists, politicians, and celebrities. Everybody else gets it. The only people who are surprised are the people who write your newspapers. Any other questions?